Hello viewers, welcome back. Today we are going to complete the five spoke wheel model we started in previous video tutorial. So if you have, haven't seen that, go and see that um, and you can come back to this. Link is in the description. So in this tutorial we start with the 3D model already built and then add some internal sketch and pocket it and use polar pattern to create the five spoke wheel now we'll start with the sketch on this aft face and and then we're going to use that face to attach the sketch and now uh, since this is in shaded mode i want to use the wireframe to see all the the features of the model so that's why i switch on the wireframe now i'm going to go into the construction mode um, you've probably seen that in the previous video i have used the construction mode and i'm going to use it extensively here now what i'm doing here is i'm going to create a sector so i'm only going to create that uh, one sector this is five spoke wheel one of the sectors is 72 degrees and and each uh, half of that is 36 degrees so uh, i'm going to put some uh, you know angles uh, to these construction lines 54 degrees is from the horizontal because you have 36 degrees from the vertical so subtract 90 uh, 36 out of 90 is 54. Now I'm going to use few more construction lines. So this is an arc that I used to get my upper bound. Um, and then I'm going to put another arc to get my lower bound for the uh, spoke. Okay. Now <clears throat> this is all approximate right now. So uh, see, the reason why I'm doing this way is, you know, once I get a sketch and fully constrain it, I can use uh, the constrained dimensions to get the ac accurate size of the model. But for the starting point, it's going to be a approximate size. So, um, so that's why these construction uh, lines help you now. Um, construction lines will not be part of the model final product. Uh, they are there to help you um, to um, I mean if you haven't used construction lines by all means start using them they are very helpful in this case you can see that's that's going to be really helpful for me to complete this sketch uh, easily and you know like it can consume less time uh, that way so as you can see on the lower left I have the fully constrained uh, a sketch now it is you can see it's overwhelming so I'm going to go step by step add constraints um, so you will see how I do that so first I'm going to start with a line I'm going to start with the left side and put a straight line down and then put a couple of more arcs on it uh, it's going to do three point arc and this way um, you know you you are drawing it approximately and i'm going to put another arc there uh, and uh, make sure you are when you put an arc and a line you want to be as close as to the tangent because you are going to constrain it by the tangent so just make sure you are as close as possible so i cut the two arcs and that the last one was connected to the my construction line now I'm going to do the same thing on the lower side. Yeah? So two more arcs on the lower bound and then connect the, 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 the second arc to the uh, construction line. So now this is the, uh, the left or the left end of the, uh, sp uh, the pocket. Now, um, as you can see, um, there is you know you still need to start constraining them now uh, i have a certain order i go through so i described more on this the order of hierarchy on the construction on my previous video i'll go through it again first you coincident all the you know points make sure they they are connected then you put verticals and horizontal 
tangency, angle, and length. So since I don't have any vertical and horizontal here, I'm going to directly jump to tangency and start tangency on all the connecting points. So there are three tangencies on the top two lines and then another three tangencies on the second or the lower uh, arcs. So, and you want to make sure you tangent the uh, the lower bound construction line as well uh, to the sketch. Now, since I have under constraint, and I, I did this purposely because so that I, I can move it and get it to um, any way or the size I want. So the lower construction line is, I know it's not fully constrained. So um, that way, um, you know, it is easier to move around. So now I got that. So I'm putting to the, you know, dimensioning. Now what I'm doing here is uh, use the uh, line and vertex constraint, pick the vertex first, and then pick the one of the construction lines and then put a dimension. So that's, uh, and then put a uh, the you know, distance constraint and, and then constrain it further. So that's what doing right now then put another uh, vertex and a line constraint at the uh, top so it's it's a you know constraining is a little bit of a tedious process uh, and you know you need to kind of uh, uh, bear with that but you know it, it's not that difficult now what you could do is you can under constrain it then of course it's not going to be a parametric model uh, parametric model always has to be fully constrained and if um, now if you don't want a parametric model yeah you can do it under constraint that's no problem but uh, you know what you mean by a parametric model is you need everything uh, fully constrained so when you change dimensions later it changes that is happening is limited. So I explained that previously in my other video. Uh, I would highly recommend go and check the uh, the part one of this tutorial as well. So now um, I keep putting all the um, vertical dimensions first. Uh, and then, you know, if there are any horizontal constraints or dimensions I need to put, I'm going to put it next. So now I'm putting the horizontal constraints. So, um, so there are a few more. Um, now you can see on in the lower left, you know, in the solver message block that my degrees of freedom keep dropping. So now I have, you know, dropped. And, and by the way, you probably be a good idea to constrain those, um, uh, the construction lines as well, uh, because they are considered part of the sketch, even though I'm not going to, you know, use them. So now we have a one degree of freedom. So when I click on that, I can see that line is still not constrained fully so I need to put a additional uh, constraint uh, uh, yeah so that is you know why I have to do that was um, the the overall sketch need a fixed point so that's why I did that now the it is constrained now I'm going to use symmetry to, you know get another a mirror if, if, uh, constraint or, or, or a sketch on the other side. So the way to do that is pick all the lines one by one on the sketch and pick the center line where you want to mirror it. Yeah, that's the one. Just pick on that and now you go and pick the symmetry. Yeah, that's the one. So now you got a sketch on the other side, exact copy. Unfortunately, uh, FreeCAD does not copy all the constraints with it. It would be nice if it did that. In this case, it did not. So you have to go and put constraints again. I have done it. I have kind of fast forwarded it. Uh, I'm not going to bore you guys with you know everything I did again, doing it again. So just uh, you know, you have to do 
we do that again now we cut all the constraints on both sides of the sketch now what i did was i deleted those construction lines i don't need them anymore i'm going with actual uh, arcs connecting those two uh, sketches so to complete the final sketch put the upper uh, arc and going to put another arc on the lower side first yeah since you got that uh, you are going to tangency putting tangencies constraining it now put another lower one so we get to go and pick the arc again and then three point arc and put the two end points and and then you adjust the third point the way you want it until you get it closer to the tangencies of the two arcs connecting so yeah you got uh, uh what you know i'm i'm i got a sketch close now uh, in terms of constraining so now i have to put few more tangencies um, it's it's tedious but yeah, keep doing that and now um, i also have to put a, a radius or radii uh, i don't know what the right word is but radius put a radius on the top arc and put another radius on the bottom one so yeah so now here when i you know have two degrees of freedom left and um, so when i click on that uh, that link uh, hyperlink you uh, get highlighted with green where the uh, constraint is and now you have to put a, that second um, you know dimension or the radius on the arc so that's what i'm going to do but first i'm going to clean it up the sketch a little bit move some dimensions here and there um, uh, so that it's visible what i'm doing so let's see um, so yeah so put the radius and then now i'm going to constrain that the center point to the central vertical axis that's what i did by um, you know align the, uh, the center point to the vertical axis now last one is to put another constraint um, just a now you know if you don't have that constraint the whole uh, sketch can move around so that's why i did the final uh, constraint there now i got the sketch now typically i would have liked to play with the dimensions but in this case since this is just an educational video i'm going to do that uh, i'm going to go ahead and uh, pocket this sketch um, and in, which is uh, you know you have to go to the part design bench to do that now in this situation i'm going to through all you know, so that you know, i just blast through the forward uh, phase and create that nice pocket there so uh, so that's completed let's go to the shading so that you can see the the pocket the uh, now we got only one pocket so we need to create five or four more to complete the model and now i'm not going to create each one of them separately you have an easier way to do that uh, that is in, in NCAD package, this is pretty much standard where you go to a you know, circular pattern. In this case, uh, we call it in FreeCAD polar pattern. So that's the, uh, uh, that you need to click on that. And now in the polar pattern, you say pocket and, and then you say, okay. So, and this is a two step process. Uh, once you say, okay, you get the, uh, the number of uh, the polar pattern you can uh, you know you need in this case five now the default polar pattern is two 
So it will show up as two. Uh, let's see. Okay, finally it came up and it's only two. Now you need to go and increase the number to five. So make it five. And you are going to end up with a five spoke wheel. So this completes the tutorial. So I'm going to be super grateful if you guys provide comments and even better if you could subscribe because I'm going to put some useful content in the future.